Praise the Lord, church family. Hello, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord today. So good. To, come on, let's just praise the Lord. I just feel like coming in. Praising Jesus. Amen. Welcoming the Lord into our service with us here today. Amen. We welcome him in. Come on, take a moment, pray, and just welcome him in today. Yes, clear my mind, clear my heart for what you would have for me today, oh God. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I create this atmosphere in my heart, in my mind. Hallelujah. Of what you want to do, what you want to instill into us, what you want to plant inside of us this morning, God. Hallelujah. That we might bear fruit and bring you glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, if you got to break up my fallow ground, break it up this morning, Jesus. Let me receive from you today, God. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for this day that you've given us today, Lord. Thank you that you are the Lord of this day. You are the Lord of today. You are the Lord in our lives. Hallelujah. We welcome you today, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord today. Well, church, welcome to God's house today. Amen. So great to have all of you with us this morning. I want to welcome you out. If today is your first time in our sanctuary or you're back visiting, or if you are streaming online with us and it's your first time, we want to welcome all of you out to this house of God, to this family of God right here at 745 Main Street. Amen. We want to welcome you today. Amen. It's a blessed day to have you in God's house, and we're looking for, forward to God to do great things in our midst. Uh, there's a, you know, that, that old song, there's a feeling in the air. Amen. God is, God is up to something. Amen. And I love him. I love that one day he's going to come down. He's just going to surprise us all. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe it'll be a blessing. Maybe it'll be something he's going to give us. Or maybe he just opened the eastern sky one day. And we all get caught up together with him in the air. Thank you, Jesus. I love it today. Amen. As we're, as we're getting ready for our service today, as our worship team is behind us, ready to sing, we're going to take one moment. We're going to honor our country that we are in today and thank God for it. And think about those around the world. Amen. And uh, just pray for countries around the world and leadership and government. And uh, pray that God, God will have his way and help those in those areas as well. Let us, let us say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Why don't we, as our worship team comes, why don't you turn to your neighbor, turn to somebody new. If you got to see somebody new around you, why don't you welcome them out to God's house today. Amen. Just welcome people.
worship him this morning thank him this morning for everything that he's done everything that you believe in for him to do in your life this morning that his presence is still with us and that he would see fit to, to come hang with a bunch of people in manchester connecticut and all over the world where he is welcomed that 
the body of Christ can come together and still worship him together, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Yes, he is jealous for me. Love's like a hurricane. I am the tree bending beneath.
singing about it but do you know it they're singing about oh how he loves us but do you know it this morning do you know how much he loves you you say how can God love me he loves you come on now he loves you he loves you like man I, I had a horrible week he loves you he loves you to face things this week I didn't want to face. He loves you. I did things he know I wouldn't be pleased with. He loves you today. Oh, how he loves you. I hope somebody feels the love of God in here. Come on, saints, just lift your hands. I want somebody to feel. I don't want you to just sing about the love. I want you to feel the love of God in the house this morning. And that love is reaching out to somebody this morning. Somebody's been broken. Somebody who's been through a hard time. The love of God is reaching out to you today. Hallelujah. When there are things that you can't even talk to other people about, I want you to know that God hears you and loves you today. I stand here today not as somebody who was raised perfect, but I stand here today as a man who God loved in spite of his imperfections, and he loved me. 
Stacy, he loves me. He loves me this morning. I love that there's, there's hundreds of people in this auditorium. But I'm just thinking about me and God and how much he loves me this morning. us and I know God's love is here for somebody today God is going to help you the prayers that you prayed he's heard and God is going to help you today amen amen I'm not just a spectator here today I'm a part of the game I'm in this today amen and God's in me and I love it let's just clap our hands to Jesus today as we make our way to our seats, you can make your way back. We're going to move on with our service, but thank God today. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Again, I want to say welcome to those who are here visiting today, maybe here for the first time, or even some old friends. It's good to see you all here today. God bless you in our service, and just thank you. Thank you for coming and being part of us, gracing us with your presence today. We're... I know some people say, like, man, I'm honored to be here. Man, I'm honored you're here today. Man, I'm honored that you come to God's house and worship our Father with us today. Amen. So thank you so much for, for coming in and being a part of that. Amen. This morning, I got a, I got a bunch of things I want to share, a bunch of a little, little announcements I want to just take a moment to uh, share with everybody. And uh, there's quite a few here. And I know we've notoriously been known for long announcements, so I'm going to move on quickly as we can. Um, we started something new this week. A lot of you got a digital email with all these announcements that I'm going to share, and we're going to start doing that. So like each week, we're going to try to send out an equally, a, an equally, a weekly uh, reminder email with basically all the different announcements that we're going to be sharing up here on the platform. That way we can kind of talk about it quickly, and then you guys can look into it a little bit more uh, when you get home. And if you're somebody who doesn't get the emails and you want to kind of keep updated, just give our office a call. Amen. You're a part of the church. You want to want to be a part of what we're doing, then just give our office a call and let us connect with you in a greater way. Okay. Thank you for that. Tonight, uh, excuse me, our tracking ministry resumes tonight. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful ministry in our church. Yes. This ministry has been going on for years and they go out on the streets and they just Find somebody to share their testimony with. And there's so many people that are here today because somebody stopped and cared even on the side of the road. Amen. So this track and ministry is going to resume tonight. Blessed ministry, blessed people. And if you want to be a part of that, you want to find somebody to share God's love with on the street. You feel God tugging at your heart to take what God has done in you and share it with somebody who may have been in the same boat that you were in. Tonight you can come 6 o'clock right here outside the, outside the door over here uh, beginning tonight and they're going to meet every Sunday night 
uh, at 6 p.m. in the Bissell Street parking lot. So if you want to be a part of that. Uh, there's also our outdoor spring cleanup is coming up Saturday, April 13th, 9 to 12. And the rain day is the 20th. We will be raking, cleaning up around our church grounds and all our properties. They have the code up on the screen. Amen. Code is up on the screen. If you want to be a part, you want to sign up, we could use more hands. You know what the Bible says? Many hands make light work. Actually, I don't know if the Bible says that, but that's a great proverb. Amen. Two are better than one, for they have a great reward for their labor. Amen. But many hands do make light work. Amen. So come on, sign up, uh, scan today, and help us out. Also, we're going to be, as we mentioned uh, in the past, our church is going through a lot of different uh, changes and different properties that we're working through, and we're selling one of our properties down the street. And so our offices are moving back to this building, and that's okay. Praise God. I'm glad you're as excited as we are. Amen. Uh, and we're, gonna, we're announcing that we need some help with some of those moves and some of the things that we're going to be doing. So on the week of April 15th, Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 12 and 1 through 4, if you, if you are free those times, you want to give us a hand. I'll be packing boxes and, and items and cleaning and small maintenance tasks. So scan the code up on the screen, check your email. You can be a part during that week. And then also, um, also the week of April 15th and the 22nd, um, our office is going to be closed. So those two weeks, our physical office is going to be closed. If you have things that you need from the staff, please try to contact them ahead of time before those two weeks, before the 15th, as we will be working minimally uh, on our transition and things that are going to be all involved in that. And so there's a lot of, a lot of moving parts. Um, I never realized how much stuff the church had, to, you know, till you start... You know the same, you know, like when you moved in your house, you're like, oh, we got this. And then you need to pull up on the second U-Haul. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's a lot of things. But if you can be a part of that, those two weeks, thank you. And just remember, get, your, uh, get anything, you put your away dates in early, you know, or wait till after. Amen. But the, our offices are still going to, we're going to be checking emails. Um, we're going to be checking our phones. So those will still be up so you can still do your normal things that you, that you do. Okay. Uh, at this time. Sister Stephanie Francois is going to come. She has an announcement from the youth. Amen. Good morning, church. How's everybody doing today? Good, good. I am up here on behalf of the youth department and all of our youth that will be going to the Southern Ohio Youth Camp this June. It's exciting. It's coming up fast. Um, we actually have 31 teens who will be attending this, this camp, so we're really excited for that. A bit more kids this year. Um, our youth are going to be bringing down something real quick as I talk to show you, because we're starting something new this morning. Um, but that week that they go, it's a week-long trip. It's filled with so many young people who just gives them time to push aside the distractions and to just set aside some time to focus on what's the most important thing in their life which is, and in the world, which is Jesus drawing closer, seeking him, you know, facing things that maybe they, they've held on to and just letting things go. It's a time of outpouring and being filled with his power. So it's a great week for them. During the week, there are multiple services. There's times of devotion that help foster a deeper relationship with God and ignite that passion of spreading the gospel in a greater way. And if you have any youth around you or if you work with youth in our world, you can see, uh, Joe, here, just pull a little bit more over, Gio. Pull it a little bit more over. There you go. Okay. Um, you can see that there's a need. There's a great need among the youth of our world, among the youth of our community. And so if they can be empowered and they can be filled and they can speak truth where they are, what, what a great light that is to an example to those around them who are facing those things. Um, but there's also plenty of time, of course, of crazy, as I've heard, World War III competitions sports and games and lots of fun. I've heard some, some crazy war stories from these trips, so it's going to be interesting to be there myself for the first time this year, which I'm excited for. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. So with all of that said, we are um, asking for your help. You can be a part of this trip and make this happen. Our goal is to raise 
$20,000 to help cover the expenses. As all of you know, things have gone up in our world, in your own homes, in your own lives. Things have just become a bit more expensive. So if you can help us by just cutting down some of the costs for these youth to go and to just draw that, that closeness to God and to find change and to find breakthrough and all of those things, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. So during the month of April, which is now, starting today, we are going to be holding an SOIC wall fundraiser. As you can see on the board here, uh, there are individual sheets with different amounts ranging from $1 to 200 And this is how you can be a part. You can take one of the sheets, one of the papers, with the amount on it, and you can commit to donating that amount. You can scan, there's a QR code on the card, so you can scan that QR code that allows you to give online right away, and then you just choose SOYC as a designation. Or you can take the slip off the board and put it in an offering envelope if you would like to record your donation and you can put it in the black kiosk boxes like you normally would for your normal giving. And however you would like to help participate, cash, check, card. We also have a donation bin if you're passive by and you don't really want to take an amount but you just want to just give something that you have to give. That would be awesome as well. So there's many options and many ways you can be a part of this. And whatever you're able to do to make this trip happen, we greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, so at this time, we're going to have a few of our youth come, and they are going to share a little bit about what they get out of this trip, what it means to them, how it helps them, and whatnot. So Sister Annabelle is going to take over. Good morning, church. Um, I just wanted to talk briefly about my experiences in SOIC. Uh, this year will be my fourth year going, which is amazing, such a blessed opportunity to to be able to go to this camp. Um, last year, I will say, um, was such an amazing year to you know, be in the presence of the Lord with all of my fellow friends from this church and um, just a bunch of other young people that share the same beliefs as me, um, that dress like me, that act like me. So um, it's just such an amazing opportunity to be immersed in that society. Um, one thing I'd like to share is last year um, they had um, a girls, like a, a women's meeting, and the speaker, her name was Sister Rhonda German, such an amazing woman, so kind-hearted and so compassionate, um, and she brought a message about self-love and knowing that, um, knowing you're beautiful, knowing your beauty lies in the Lord, and um, you are perfect in his eyes, and during that message, God just spoke to me in the middle of her message, and I remember looking at her and just immediately breaking down and crying because God just had touched me in such a way that I had never felt before. He had released me from my bondages of, um, of thinking that I wasn't worth God's love, that I wasn't worth anybody else's love. Um, and I'm just so thankful that I got to go to SOIC to be able to have that healing. So please sponsor us because I know that our youth is so hungry to get out there and get more of God. Um, we, we want this. We want this. And I just can't wait to see the amazing things that God is going to do for our youth and continue to grow us in the way that he's already continuing to grow us now. And then, um, unfortunately, um, Ayana um, Lundy couldn't make it this morning, sadly, um, and she was going to share a little bit about her experience, but um, I have what I have a little, a little thing of what she was going to say and share this morning. So this is from Ayana Lundy's heart. The experience I had in SOYC was life-changing. I've seen so many lives changed, healed, and delivered, including mine. There was a day Robbie Grubbs preached and his fiancée, now wife, Kira, gave a short testimony of how she felt abandoned by her her biological parents and a few foster homes. Until God stepped in and gave her a beautiful family and restored her. Robbie Grubbs gave an altar call for those who felt like her, abandoned from parents and needed healing. I took that call for myself and I went to the altar. I linked up arms with my brother Javen and I cried out to Jesus for healing of my broken heart and feeling rejected and abandoned. I can say today, like the song Kira sang, 
for the altar call. You have saved, healed, delivered me. Jesus' blood wash over me, commanded my soul, awaken, arise, use each breath to prophesy, I prophesy. And she says in bolded, I'm free. Jesus has filled the void I had, and I am standing and believing God will do the same for this coming SOIC for the rest of the youth in our church. Um, my name is Giovanni, and I'm here to talk about SYC. It was different, like, like not stuff. It was so. It was very good for me. I was lost then. It was like a smile. Because when I went, I wasn't really, I wasn't there. But when that one message came, messages for like for the morning the men I don't know his name but somebody he was he was teaching us about how to be a man of God and what we need to do so can't wait for us to go back and listen to the man and be hungry for more Last year, uh, when I went to SYC, uh, I really uh, knew that like, God was going to touch me. And remembering what happened a couple years ago before we went, uh, I was just really looking forward to it. And uh, God really touched me, and I really do feel like he touched everyone there that went. And when we came back, and we didn't just leave what we got there. We came back with the same thing. And I really feel like our church has grown from what from what we received there. And yeah. I feel like uh, our church has really grown because our youth has grown and yeah. I feel it. Yeah. And uh, uh, this year, you know, we're bringing more, uh, more youth and I can't wait to see what God's gonna do with them and can't wait to see what he's gonna do when we come back. Amen. Isn't that awesome, church? That's what this trip does, and that's what your giving does. So please, this morning, we will be in the back of the church if you would like to be a part of this fundraiser and support these youth to find those changes, find those healings, find those breakthroughs that they come home and they're different. When they came home last year, it wasn't just a week of, of praise and worship, but they, they came home changed, and they kept it and it's burning, and it's growing, and it's working. So that's what your support does today. So please come and see us in the back today, and we'll be doing this for the whole month of April. So if you don't get a chance today, there will be other opportunities for you to support. And thank you, thank you, thank you, church. Thank you for your prayers for our youth. Thank you for always supporting their endeavors. Thank you for building them up, telling them what they are, speaking truth into their lives. Thank you for supporting and loving them. And before we close out this announcement this morning, can all of those who are going to SOIC stand up and just come down to the front for a quick moment so that the church can see your bright, shining, smiling faces this morning? Amen, amen. Come on down. These are the lives that you're going to support, church. These are the lives that you're going to send on this trip.
Amen. All right now. Hallelujah. Is that all? Oh, we got Reverend Hamlet's coming. <laughs> amen, amen. Give them a hand. So as we go, as we plan, as we, as we just work on our fundraiser, please keep us in your prayer. Keep every single one of these youth in your prayer, not just for safe travels, but that God will speak directly to them, that God will, will bring them even further in the purpose and the plan that they, God has for every single one of these lives. It doesn't matter how some of them are quiet and some of them are loud. It doesn't matter their personalities, which are all wonderful and great, but no matter who they are, no matter what they are, God will speak and God will change and God will direct and God will use these young people to bring people into this church. So please keep them in your prayers. Please be a part of this fundraiser. We thank you, church. God bless you today. Amen. While they're taking their seats, our ushers are going to come. And if you'd like to just be a part of giving a little bit further today, you can do that at this time. Uh, they're going to be passing the offering baskets. You can scan the QR code to give. You can go to Easy Tithe to give just any way uh, you can. We just ask you and thank you for being a blessing. And just don't forget that fundraiser for the next month. And I know you say, man, that's a lot of money. Well, man, we got a lot more kids going this year than we have in the past. And uh, this year we... Uh, renting a, a third van was just going to be too much because you got to have certain age of drivers and just driving is crazy. Then if you stay overnight, it's another hotel. You guys can start taking up the offer. Go right ahead. And uh, so just we had to, we're getting a big bus this year. Amen. We're going back to the old days. Amen. We're taking a bus. We're all driving together. Going to be safe. Uh, don't have to worry about drivers being tired. And uh, so, so that, and then, you know, one thing I know, like, I know it's been said, you know, every time, you know, any, any church youth group goes to some, some event, youth conference or whatever, it seems like they got to come back and kind of get re-all saved and re-all filled all over again. You know what? I don't think that's this group this year. I think they're going and they've kept what they got last year and you've seen them grow stronger and stronger as the year has gone on. But if you can continue to support them, there's some other, it's their, it's their first time. And I know God wants to get a hold of them just like he's get, gotten a hold of you and he's gotten a hold of me. And so I'm looking forward to what God is going to do in this group. Amen. And uh, so if you need, if you want, if you want to give in the offer, just lift your hands up to help you. Our singer's going to come get ready. We're going to just sing. Have, feel, I don't know what you're singing but we're going to worship Jesus today. We're going to have a good time. Amen. So they're going to play something as, the, uh, as they finish taking up the offering. God bless you all.
morning, church. How many know that praise opens prison doors? The Bible says in Acts 16, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. This morning, our praise is going to open prison doors. What's your prison door this morning? Make it personal. What are you facing today? Make it personal and begin to envision that door swinging wide open and your victory coming. I don't care if it's healing. I don't care if it's a need you have or something you've been trying for years. God is going to open that prison door this morning. And what does that take? That takes you praising God. That takes you saying, God, despite my circumstance, despite what I'm going through, I love you. I thank you. I praise you. You've been good. You brought me through before. You're going to bring me through before. So this morning, whatever door it is, praise is going to open it up for you this morning. God bless you. Sing with us. opens prison doors we'll sing from sunset to sunrise and if worship makes these walls come down we'll sing from morning to midnight yeah we'll sing from morning to midnight Jesus' name. Oh, we sing and chains start falling. We shout because there is an empty grave. We sing because we believe there's power in Jesus' name. We sing and walk. Change. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can speak to a little bit about that. Amen. Glory. Praise opens prison doors. If what you're going through, if, if your victory depended on how much you praise God, how much would you praise God? Right? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a wood could chuck wood? How much praise would you praise if you knew at the end of your praise you'd get your victory? Amen? Amen. Remember that. Remember that. Amen. That was a great song. Well, this morning, praise the Lord, everybody. Excited to be here. Uh, I feel like I've been looking forward to today for like months now, and I, I don't know why. Just looking forward to what God is doing, uh, what he's going to do through the next, next little while in this series we're going into, and it's just really, really exciting. I just felt God, and I thank God for his leading and where he leads us and just how things fit in and what God does. If you don't appreciate God, well, get an appreciation. My goodness, God is good today. So today we're going to be starting a series called Cultivating Gardens. Cultivating Gardens. And today's individual title is Living a Life That Blooms. Cultivating Gardens, Living a Life That Blooms. I thank our media team who's put together some great little videos. I love it. I love, love what they did. I appreciate them. Amen. They're, they're a hardworking team. I'm pushing them, I'm pushing them on, uh, beyond their boundaries, amen. Although every time I push, Chris, Christopher, Chris Jr. is like, okay, got a little bit more money? 
He's got this laundry list of things that would make their, make their job, so we're working on it, man. He, I love Christopher. He's such a funny guy. Hey, Amen. But I really thank them, and I'm, I, I'm appreciative of everything and everybody. Hey, Amen. Every, every, every ounce of effort people have put in, I'm just grateful to God. And uh, your, your labors, your prayers, your works don't go unnoticed. Man, last Monday night I came around here. This place was hopping last Monday night. And, you know, it reminded me of days gone by when this, on a Monday night, this place was filled with people. And this past Monday night, this place was filled with people. They were all over here just putting their hands to the work, the cleaners, the maintenance teams, uh, you know, some people helping with our little renovation projects. And so I thank you. If you have, if you got, if you want to do something for God, give us a call. Amen. If you want to, if you're like, where do I fit in? What can I do? Give us a call. We have a good way of putting you somewhere, amen? And I got to help you. Everybody's got a skill that God can use for his kingdom, amen? And so we appreciate you. So we do come out on Monday nights if anybody's out there and they're like, hey, I want to come out and help our maintenance team. I want to come out and help what they're doing around God's house. Just come on out. Shock Brother Cliff. Let's shock him. Let's shock him. Let's make Brother Cliff scramble. There's, there's, let's make him scramble. Oh, my gosh, there's 10 more people than I expected here tonight. Trust me, Brother Cliff will be like, I got work for them to do. I got things. We got, we got this. Amen. Amen. We're going to move on. Cultivating gardens. The definition of the word cultivate. We're going to start here today. To prepare your land. Cultivate is preparing land. It is what you do to grow your crops on the land that you've prepared. It's to grow a specific type of crop, something specific. You plan specifically. Uh, one thing you may have to do different for whatever you're trying to grow. It's not an exact formula. Amen? So the different things that you have to do for the different crops you're trying to grow sometimes take a, takes a little bit different method. And so we're talking about cultivate. It talking about developing. We're talking about improving our lives, improving the things that God has. And cultivate also means to create a new condition. Create a new condition. Amen. By your efforts. Mm. Cultivate also means to become friendly with someone. Cultivate. What is our garden? What's the garden? Cultivate gardens. In the next little while as we talk about this series and cultivate and gardens, we're going to be talking about you and the garden of your life and what God wants to do in your garden, but then what you want God to do in your life. Each and every, why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, hey, garden. You are a garden. And what do you want to grow in the garden? Flowers, plants, vegetation, the love of God, the strength of God, gifts and callings, the Holy Spirit, faith, baptism. What do you want to grow in your life? And what are you doing to cultivate your life in order so that garden can grow? Your life is a garden. How you prepare your life, improve your spiritual life, will determine if you are going to bloom, if you are going to blossom, for the, if your fruit in your life is going to grow. Can your life bear fruit? Hmm. Can your life bear fruit? Some of you are questioning, what can God do with me? What can God cause to grow in my life? Can you bear fruit? What fruit is God going to bring forth out of my life? Everybody wants to bear good fruit, right? In your life, don't you want to be good? Isn't that the goal? Some of us, a few of us. We want, we want to bear something good. We want, our, we want when people look at us, they want to say, oh, there goes Brother Yancey. He's bald, but he bears good fruit. He's kind. He's gentle. He's, com he's strong. He's knowledgeable. They're clapping for your hair, not for the fruit that you're bearing. <laughs> but what, what do you want people to see growing in your life? Okay? 
We all want to grow something good. And when, when, we, when someone sows something in their lives or through their lives, you want that to grow into something. When you take time and effort and put it, you want that to grow into something. Uh, in order for a seed to grow, you have to set the right condition for growth. You must have a vision for your garden. You may have to break up the fallow ground. You have to pick out the seeds you want to sow. Having a watered garden is a must. If you want to live a spiritual life that blooms like a, a flourishing garden, then you must make sure that you are cultivating your life properly how God would want you to cultivate your life. Amen? This series, we're going to talk about the things we need to cultivate and incorporate into our garden to ensure that our life blooms for Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John 15, 8, Herein is the Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. You want to glorify God? Then bloom. You want to bring glory to God through your life? Maybe you're like, well, hey, I, I, I ain't got much. You know, I can look around, and, and there are a lot of people better off than me. But if you want God, if you want to glorify God, bear much fruit. Let's deconstruct your garden for the next few weeks. Let's reverse engineer your flourishing fruit so that we can see how to cultivate our lives and let our garden grow. Every spring, this springtime, right? Spring. Anybody thought of gardens yet? Every spring, I don't know, our family, you know, it's probably like that spring fever. You've been in the, you've been cooped up all winter. We get out there, we start driving down the road, and all of a sudden, we're like, oh, there's a nursery. Let's start a garden. You drive down, and you drive down the local nursery, and out of the blue, you get this eureka moment. Eureka! I am going to start a garden. And I quickly get this vision in my mind of the most luscious, blossoming garden I've ever seen. Has anybody ever been to Elizabeth Park when they're full blossom? Oh, one of the most beautiful pictures you've ever seen. Well, well when, I, when I'm picturing my garden, that's what I'm picturing. I'm picturing blood, butterflies and roses, and, and that's the only other flower I know. But that, that, we're, we're cultivating gardens. I get the vision, and, or, or you, you think about your garden, and I'm like, man, this is going to look like Eden when I'm done with it. You know, like, this is where God is going to come and reside. You know, you got your rose, and you got your things growing, and the other things growing. No, no, in all seriousness, has anybody ever seen my garden? Anybody? It's because I've never made one. I have never once made a garden. I have gone to that nursery, and I've envisioned this great big garden, and I've looked at all the plants, and then I look at what I need to buy to make this plant grow, and then I have to sit and listen to the master gardener say, well, you got to do this, this, and this. And so my big garden turned into a, turned into a, a, um, a, a planter, a small little planter, you know, four feet wide. And then I'm like, I'm thinking about it a little deeper. I'm like, this planter, man, this is still going to take some work. So I, I relegate to like a little pot like this size. <laughs> this is my garden right here. This tiny little garden just got one, got one leaf popping out of it. And you know what? I buy it from there because it's already growing, but then I get home, I got to take care of it. And by the end of a couple weeks, nothing's growing. It's still, it, what was once green is now brown. My vision quickly fades. You know what I call that little potted plant, that one little planter, that only little thing that every time we go, and every year we say, it's going to be different. We're going to put the time and effort in to make sure this little thing grows. And it still never grows. You know what I call? That's my lazy garden. My lazy garden. We want to flourish, 
But we don't want to put the time and effort into takes in that it takes to cause what needs to grow to properly grow. Lazy gardens. I've had a bunch of them over the years. None. The only one that ever flourished was I was in second grade and we had the little styrofoam cup. And it only flourished because we left it at school and the teacher made sure she watered it. Because the moment it grew one tiny little purple flower, I brought it home and that tiny little purple flower died. If you want your life to bloom and blossom and flourish, you must put the time and effort into making sure your life is properly cultivated, properly taken care of, properly prepared, the proper time and effort put into your life to ensure that what you put in is what you are going to get. We like lazy gardens. Our world is filled with lazy gardens. It's, make, it's getting lazier and lazier. I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to f- be fruitful for Jesus, you've got to put in the time and the effort. We love getting things quick, don't we? There's an actual scientific study. I'm not going to get into it today, but there's a scientific study that talks about why we want things so quickly. What we do, we want it quick. We can't get our Dunkin', that that coffee place fast enough. If we got somebody in front of us, we can't get it fast enough. If the line is too long at this fast food, we go to the next fast food. We drive up to the restaurant and there's one person standing outside the door. We're like, let's go to another one. It must be, the wait must be too long. We get it into our mind that everything, we get, a, we get a thought and a vision and we want it that moment and that very hour, but that's not how the Spirit of God works. That's not how you become fruitful. You must put in the time and the effort that is required for your life to grow and your life to blossom. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing. Proverbs 13.4 the soul of the slugger desire and have nothing. You can desire something all you want, but it ain't going to do nothing if you just stand there and look at the picture. You must put in the effort in order for that to become what the picture shows it's going to become. Mark Batterson, an uh, uh, author and, and pastor, said this, we, we want success at the speed of light, instead of the speed of a seed planted in the ground. We want to be successful, but we want our success yesterday without the effort it requires. Everything great takes effort. Let's just be honest. We can try to, we can try to sneak around it any way we want, but if you want to be spiritually successful and bloom and blossom and flourish and your fruit to grow in your life, you must put in the spiritual effort. It took Jesus 30 years of cultivating preparation, prayers, fast, and study, dedication before we ever saw fruit from his ministry. 30 years. You don't hear much about those 30 years. And so we don't want to put in the 30 years before we get to our fruit. And you're like, Pastor John, I'm older than you. And I know you're older than 30. You got to put in the effort. Don't matter how, it don't matter how many gardens you've planted and you've reaped, it's still time to plant a garden. It don't matter how successful you have been in your life and your ministry. God is bringing you to places where he wants you to be fruitful for him. It don't matter how many times you've served in ministry, what, what, what level you're at in ministry, what education you've had in ministry, what title you have in ministry, or what title you don't have. We all 
have fruit that we must bear to bring glory to God. He didn't say, well, when you, re when you reach this age, you don't have to build your garden anymore. I don't read that. He doesn't, put a, he doesn't put an age limit. Well, unless you're 18, you can't have a garden yet. No, no. God says, I want all of you to bear much fruit. Every single one of you. And I don't want you to do it. I call them happy sacrifices. You know the painter, Bob Ross. He used to paint happy trees. You know? Anybody know Bob and by that guy? I wish I had his hair. <laughs> well, when he would paint a tree, he would call this, this little happy tree, right? Happy tree. Well, I'm calling these happy sacrifices. You want to put something good on your canvas? You want to grow into something great? You have to have happy sacrifices. You're like, Pastor, like, when I sacrifice, it's not too happy. You may not be happy today, but the moment your fruit comes forth, you are going to be happy that you made that sacrifice and made that determination that you are going to put in the effort it takes to grow. It means you're going to pray. It means you're going to study, you're going to fast, you're going to apply yourself to the ministry at whatever that level you are because you are determined that the thing inside of you is going to grow. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved. Be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. God was very clear. It ain't going to come quick. There's a Jewish scholar. His name was Honey the Circle Maker. Some of you may have read this book. Honey the Circle Maker. He was journeying on the road... And he saw a man planting a carob tree, C-A-R-O-B, carob tree. And Honey asked this man, he said, how long does it take for the tree that you are planting to grow and bear fruit? The man replied, 70 years. So Honey asked him, he said, are you certain that you're going to live long enough to see the fruit of that tree? And the man looked at him and said this. He says, I found these Korob trees in the world, and they were here before I got here. Somebody planted that tree before I came. Now I'm planting a seed so that somebody after me will see the same tree and see the same fruit. You may not fully see the fruit of what you're trying to grow and what God wants to bring forth in you, but let me tell you, there's a generation. You just saw that generation standing before you. You may not fully see where they, what they become in 30 and 40 years, but the fruit that you grow today and the seed that you plant today is going to bless the generations to come. Keep on planting your seed. We all love Elisha. You know, the double portion Elisha. We love reading and hearing about the double works that Elisha did. We love witnessing in the Scripture uh, the miraculous power that, that God worked through Elisha. But do you know before Elisha ever got that portion, ever got the double anointing, double blessing, or whatever you want to call it, he had to submit himself for a time to an Elijah. God may call you when you're young. God called David at a younger age. He still had to go and even serve Saul and play before Saul. You want God, you want God's goodness, and you're like, I want to I wanna fast forward to the fruit. You can't fast forward to the fruit until you put in the time and effort and submit yourself into God and what God is looking for your life to grow and to produce. 
There is no fast track to ministry. There's no fast track to getting things done for God. There's no fast track to having your fruit grow and for you to flourish and bloom. But I tell you this, if you take the time to pray and you take the time to submit and you take the time to sometimes make sacrifices before God, you are going to see fruit grow from your life and it will be the most uh, pleasant and luscious fruit you've ever seen. Take your time. Ricky Bruso, he's not here, but I told him I was talking about him today. I talk to Ricky Bruso every year. We all know Brother Ricky. He's a great guy. Kind of crazy, but he's a great guy. And every year he talks to me about his garden. I'm the greatest listener. In my mind, I'm like, I am never going to do a garden. So I don't even, you know, like, but he tells me all about his garden, how, what he's doing, what he's planting. And every year, I stop over his house, and he shows me what this bed is going to become. And then he takes me over to the other side and says, well, this over here, this is going to be this. And see that big contraption over there? See, that is where this is going to grow. And then he said this to me. He said, see what I'm doing right here? I'm not actually planting anything here this year, but in a couple years, this is going to be prime and perfect for when I get a little older, I can have this fruit to bear. If you don't have a vision for you and your life, you will never produce anything. If Ricky Brusso, as crazy as that man is, and as funny as he is, and as much as we laugh at him, he's got a vision for his garden. You, a garden, here's how you cultivate. It starts with a vision in your heart and your mind. Maybe it's something God implants. Maybe it's a vision that God puts there. Or maybe it's your desires before God. God, I want to bear much fruit. God, I want when people look at me, I want them to see the love of God. I want to them to see the peace of God. I want them to see the power of God. That's my vision for my garden. I'm not there yet, Brother Chris, but you know what? I'm willing to put in the work, and I'm willing to put in the effort so that one day, one day, I'm going to see a sprout. I'm going to see that thing grow. But it takes vision where there is no vision. The people perish, or the fruit of the tree rots and decomposes. Can I tell somebody here today? Start planting now. Start planting right now. Start planting in your mind. Get a vision for what God wants to do in you. None of us are just, none of us should be just stopping at the nursery and say, oh, I want this. Get a vision. Get a vision, God. Make that your prayer this week. Get a vision for what kind of fruit God wants you to bear. Maybe there's something in your life that isn't quite blossoming how, how you thought it was going to blossom. I want you to start praying and get a vision. Maybe start fasting and seeking God over these things because God, God's desire, his whole desire for you, church, individual, is that you blossom and that you grow. But he wants you to have that vision first. Start planning right now. We talk about the Garden of Eden. We talk about Genesis 1-1. We talk about what the garden became. Of course, we always talk about what ended up happening in that garden. But we talk about this garden, this perfect and beautiful place. Do you know, before the foundation of the world, God already had a plan and a vision for that garden. We think it's by chance and happenstance, whatever that word is. God knew where to put the sun. He knew where to put the moon. He knew where to put them so one day on April 8th they're going to cross. Heard about all the eclipse this week. God knows what he's doing. He knew what trees needed to be in there. 
He knew what fruit needed to grow. He knew that the, the garden couldn't be flourishing if it didn't have water going through it. God planned it all. He had a vision. I want you to get a vision for your life. And I don't want you to just get a vision for you individually, but I want, I want you to get a vision for what that fruit is going to do for the kingdom of God. What can God do with me? I'm not where I need to be yet. Well, keep on cultivating. Keep on putting yourself and preparing yourself to a place where God can use you. Let me tell you this. Stop winging it. Some, some around me know that's my favorite thing. I love to wing it. But there are things in your life. You know, it's Friday. We got Team Velocity that night. You know, it's always, you know, I would always call Reverend Hamlin and say, Reverend Hamlin, um, it's Friday. You know, we in, you know, got three hours before our activity group meets. Do you have this, 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 and this, and this, and this? I'm like, oh, my, they're like panicking. Like, what is Reverend Lottenbeck doing? I was winging it. I was just kind of making it happen last minute. Put everybody else in a tizzy. Don't wing it in God. Don't make it a last-second decision. Plan your life right now. Plan what God wants to do in your life today. And then once you have it planned and once you have a vision, take a moment right now. I want everybody to take a moment. And I want you to think, what fruit does God want me to grow? What does God want me to produce? Or what are you feeling in your heart and your mind? Maybe you're feeling something new you've never felt before. Maybe that's God giving you a vision for the next garden to start planting in your life. Think about it. And then when you think about it, go and make it happen. God gave Noah every, every detail to build that ark. He gave him the wood, the pitch, the size, the animals, every, every detail. God is going to help you, and God is going to speak to you, and God is going to talk to you about the things that he wants for your life, because in the end, he wants you to bear good fruit. Amen? Does anybody know what Jenkins Hill is? Any scholars? They're scholar. Jenkins Hill. Dale? No? Okay. All right. Jenkins Hill. Nobody? I'm going to tell you. Does anybody know who Pierre Charles Elephant is? Any extra? Oh, Jesse, who is he? Okay. Lied in the house of God. Well, I'm going to tell you. Alan Font was the one who established the vision for the federal city. Does anybody know what the federal city is? I'm throwing out all these things today, and nobody's raising their hand. We are going to have some Bible studies. We're going to have some sco school lessons here. The federal city. How about, how about Resurrection City? Anybody ever heard of Resurrection City? Yes, man, I got you all today. You better listen. Elephant was the one who established the vision for Federal City, which would be up to 10 square miles. And in this square 10 miles, he saw this hill called Jenkins Hill and what it would be. And Jenkins Hill was where uh, Elephant envisioned the Congress House to be. Okay? He envisioned... This empty place, little gardens here and there, and he saw Jenkins Hill, and he said, this is where we're going to put the Congress House. And the Congress House is what you would now call Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. He is the one who came up with the current plan. If you look back at maps from 19, uh, 1790, you will see some of the very same roads that Ellen Font envisioned for Washington, D.C. to become. It didn't happen overnight. But he had a vision. I want you to get a blueprint for what God wants to do in your life. 
I want you to take some time and effort and prayer and say, God, what do you want from me? Or say, God, this is what I want you to bring out of me, and this is what I want. Get a vision and get a blueprint, and then start working on that blueprint. Some of the same roads you walk when you go to Washington, D.C., are from the same map that was constructed in 1790 by this man. He had a vision and he worked to make that vision come to pass. What's your vision? There's a Sunday school song we used to sing. Read your Bible. Pray every day. Sister Janet, what's it say next? Read your Bible, pray every day, and you will grow, grow, grow. You want to make it happen. You want to grow? Get down and read God's Word. Study to show thyself approved. You want to be fruitful? Get down and pray and let God lead you in prayer and talk to you in your times of prayer. You want to flourish for God? Then get down and grow and be a part of what God is doing right now and you're going to see little blossoms, things to start to come to fruition in your life and you are going to start to see growth just like that song. Grow, grow, grow. But if you neglect your Bible, uh-oh, uh-oh, if you neglect your Bible and you forget to, then you will shrink, shrink, shrink. And I always love the part when we shrunk. i got to be an honest pastor. I love the part when we shrunk because when we shrunk, it means that's when we could grow again. We can start to grow. And then when we got to the top of that grow, 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 we were jumping to the highest points we could jump. Get a vision for what God has for you. And let me tell you this. When God gives you a vision, don't just wait around and wonder what's going to happen. Start doing something that day. Start to, sometimes we get a vision so far in advance that we forget that there's something you can do right now to make that happen. Thomas Carlyle said this. He says, our main business is not to, leave what, to see what lies dimly at a distance, but to do what lies clearly at hand at present. He said, let go of dead yesterdays and unborn tomorrows and live for what God is doing right now. Now, God is, trying to do, God is trying to cultivate you right now in your life. Don't wait until 10 years from now and, and get a vision for what it's going to be, but start applying it this day and this hour. I'm going to end with this quick thought. i got a few more. We'll come back next week. In, in ancient times, in Jewish traditions in Israel, when they would build gardens, when they would build gardens, in the middle of the garden, they would call, they would put a tower. In the middle of the garden, in the vineyard, you can even find this in, in Matthew chapter 7, in the middle of the vineyard, they would plant a garden. They would put a hedge about the garden, and in the middle of the garden, there would be a tower. Song of Solomon calls it a shepherd's tent. In the middle of the garden, there would be a tower. There would be a shepherd's tent. There would be a residence for the caretaker, for the protector, for the one who is going to watch over that garden. If you want your garden to grow and you want your life to flourish, you've got to have a shepherd's tent right in the middle of that life. Amen? Amen? You've got to have a shepherd's tent built, a tower, a watchtower. Who's the great shepherd? You want your garden to flourish, Sister Kitty? Get Jesus in the middle of your garden. That, I wasn't directed at her. We were just talking about her. I'm not telling her she's, you know, you're missing out. You got Jesus. Listen, if you want God, if you want God to help you, He's got to be the center of everything that you do. You want God to protect you from the things, and we'll talk next week a little bit more about that. 
You want God to protect you and help you from the predators and the things that try to come and hinder your garden? Then you better put Jesus right in the center of your life. You want, you want that, that, that apple tree, that apple fruit, the love of God. You want, you want God's love to grow and, and, and bear much fruit in your life? It's only going to come when Jesus is center of your life. When Jesus is in the center of your life, it's easier to apply the things we have to apply because God, we know he's, he's the center. We sing that, we used to sing that old song, Jesus, you're the center of And all that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my hope. Come on, Jesus, everybody. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Stand up, everybody, stand up. Jesus. You're the center of my joy. Comes from you. You're the heart. You're the heart of my hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of... Come on, one more time. Let's sing it all together. I'll make it your prayer. Make it your prayer. Be the center of my garden, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Think about your garden. All that's good. Think about what you want to cultivate. Be the heart. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. This morning, I want to talk to somebody in here today. We're going to continue with this topic for the next little while. Get into some of the other things that God really wants us to cultivate. Maybe our faith. Presence of God. Maybe our relationships. What does God want our life to cultivate? I'll tell you this, if you put Jesus at the center... If you put the good shepherd in the center of your life, make him number one, central focal point in your business, in your job, in your family, in your ministry. You put God in the center as the center point. God is going to help bring it all together for you. Allow him to talk to you. Allow him to help you. Maybe you're here in the house today just want to give an altar call for you if you're here and you need Jesus to be the center of your life maybe you're like you know I know about Jesus I've served Jesus a long time but I've neglected to put him at the center I'm going to ask you will you will you let God do it for you this morning will you yield yourself enough so that God can become the center of your life if that's you you can take a step of faith. We have ushers that'll pray with you. You don't have to do it alone. Maybe you're here and you need Jesus. Like, I need Jesus. I need hope. And I need, I need my life to flourish. Currently, my life is floundering, but I need it to flourish. Would you come and commit your life to Jesus and let Jesus help you? If that's you, come. Make your way down this morning. Let him come and help you. Come on, Jesus. If that's you, there's still room for you. Come on. Jesus, you're the center of my life.
come this morning. I want to flourish. You're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. Oh, you're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Come on, make that your prayer. Jesus be the center. Jesus, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. With all your heart, let's sing it. Let's lift our chorus up to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you're, you're the, the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you.
this week I pray as you go this is just the start of some things we're going to talk about get a vision for what God wants to bring forth in your life I'm going to give you three things to sow this week this week I want you to sow three peas three rows of peas Peas of mind, peas of heart, and peas of soul. So, this week, so this week, we're going to come back and talk about what we sow is what we will reap. Amen? Come on back this week. Find somebody this week. Listen, remember our SOIC trip. If you want to be a part, that board is on the back. Be a part of that. Help these kids go. If you want to be busy for God, come on out Monday. Give us a call. Let us connect with you somewhere. Amen. Come back Wednesday night. Jesus. Jesus.